All right, we are live on Facebook, you guys. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Destiny Launchers. My name is Tracy Anderson, and we are so very, very excited to have an awesome, awesome powerhouse that's going to speak to us today about launching our purpose. If you are not familiar with me, again, my name is Tracy Anderson. You can learn more about me at TracyDAnderson.com. That'll give you all the goods, goods and the details about who I am. I'm not going to get into all that because today is not about me at all. Today is about you, our viewing and listening audience. We want to give you some practical tools that you can use so that you can launch your destiny, so that you can move. It's Krisha Sarah Bowen. You probably already see her beautiful face. And she is going to, um, again, tell us about purpose. She is what we call, what she calls herself, as the giant slayer. How many people have giants in their life? How many people have things, obstacles, issues, delays, and distractions in their life that they need to get rid of, that they need to get a handle on, that they need to properly put in its place? But you just don't know what to do. You don't know what tools to call on. You, you know, you, maybe in your family, nobody really told you how to get over certain traumas or certain issues or certain things going on in your life. So that means you have to outsource. You have to find a person or a group that can help you launch forth in that that you want to do. So that is where we birth hashtag Destiny Launchers. I want to introduce to some because uh, everybody knows who she is. So I'm just introducing to some Miss Miss Krisha Sarah Bowen. Yay! Tracy, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to share with the viewers. Anytime I have an opportunity to talk about purpose, this thing on the inside of me just wells up because I know it is what I was created to do. So I'm excited to be here. I'm ready to share, to answer all the questions, and just to dig deep into understanding our purpose, our process, progress, and all of it as it relates to what we were created to do. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'm just going to say, you know, how I was introduced to her. Now, we have not met personally, right? Um, we know each other via social media. And I had the opportunity yes. to participate in a, uh, a class that Mr. Felix Anderson, a lot of you are familiar with Mr. Felix Anderson. And so we encourage you guys. So... I'm on the call. I had no idea. I heard this beautiful accent come on to the call. And um, she went in to talk about her new uh, her book, uh, Purpose Diaries. So she was giving us an introduction about Purpose Diaries. <clears throat> and I'm just listening and participating, and you know. But it was, you know, a few things that she had said that really hit home, you know, to the point where I just started crying. My face was just wet with tears. And I thought to myself, my God. You know, I really, I had no idea, you know, just how a lot of the painful things that we go through in life can actually launch you and push you into your purpose. Maybe you could talk more about uh, Purpose Diaries and just kind of give everyone a big introduction about that. Of course, absolutely. Uh, purpose Diaries actually started out as my personal diary of purpose mm -hmm. when I had no idea why I was created and I was at this point in my life where I simply did not know what to do um, maybe like many of the viewers I didn't know what the next step was or how to even get there so what I did Tracy was I started to journal and I called it my diary of purpose because actually journaling helped me to get to that place where I started to understand who Krisha is. I started to understand why I was created. And then I started this movement called Purpose Diaries where I encourage others mm -hmm. to begin to journal and to tap into their purpose. So it started off as my personal journey. It started off as my personal uh, diary, so to speak, and me just going through uh, my feelings on paper. I always say, Things that you'll never say to an individual, things that you'd never say to someone else because you may feel like they would judge you or you feel embarrassed, it's easy to write it. Right. And that was um, that was the beginning of me, you know, discovering who I was created to be, just journaling. 
And with the movement Purpose Diaries, I encourage people to write their own journey of purpose because purpose is like an evolution. We evolve. I know sometimes we think that I just need to find out what my purpose is and live it, but it's actually a journey and we discover new things about ourselves. We discover new things about our assignments. We discover new things about our God and what he has put on the inside of us. So we will always have this diary of purpose that Mm -hmm. we are living and that we are writing because we are living epistles bred of men. So we would always have this story that we are writing. We would always have this journal. We would always have that purpose diary yes my yeah journaling is so therapeutic i think a lot of us underestimate it um you know i i would uh, go through periods where i was very active with my journaling and so i would journal 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 every day and then something would happen i would get distracted you know and i I would forget and um but it has been made a major blessing for me to go find those old journals just to see you know where i've come from and um how you know God carried me, you know, through some of the toughest times. And uh, so a lot of that stuff that, you know, that's in the journal will actually be in a book at some point, you know. Exactly. Well, it was awesome. If you guys are interested in getting Purpose Diaries, I'm telling you, it will bless you. Um, They would go to to Amazon, right? Correct. So go to Amazon.com. I'm telling you, you need it in your life. Go ahead and get that. (laughs) It blessed me. It blessed me. I had to. I had to buy it. I think I bought the digital download of it, and um, so I encourage you guys to go to Amazon and look up Krisha Sarah Bowen, and you will yeah. see her her um, her work right there. So yeah. uh, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper into purpose. I, I want to call you the Queen of Purpose because <laughs> you always have such you know poignant things that you say. Uh, as it pertains to purpose. So I, I really trust you to just flow, you know, as God leads you to flow. But um, maybe tell us, before you go more into purpose, tell us about Trinidad and Tobago. Tell, <laughs> so that's where you live now. I live in Trinidad and Tobago, my beautiful island that yes. I love, 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 love. Mm-hmm. Dead to my heart, never cool, always warm, love it. Yes. <laughs> oh, hopefully I can go visit one day, one of these days. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. And hopefully by the end of this, I'll be able to have that accent. We'll test it out. <laughs> well, we have to go through a couple lessons, but you can get it. Okay, okay. I'm going to give it a try. Don't, don't, don't judge me if I mess it up. Don't judge me if I mess it up. I'm going to give it a try, though. So let's talk about, let's talk about purpose, um, the components of purpose. I know that I think I've seen you do, go live and talking about the components of purpose. You want to talk about that? Sure, let's do it. So I I had this revelation while I was popping a bag of popcorn. And (laughs) snacks will do it every time. (laughs) Everything speaks to me. I mean, the TV speaks, the radio speaks, everything speaks. And this thought came into my mind, Tracy, that people think that purpose is microwavable. And we think that it's instant. Mm-hmm. So we expect to mm-hmm. uh, discover it or to know what it is really, really quickly. Mm-hmm. And then we expect once we know what it is, that there is a, some type of acceleration that happens because of knowing our purpose. So there is this thing in our mind because we are in an instant generation that we want things really quickly and we don't want to go through process to progress. And I wanted to dive into that today because I feel as if a lot of people are so quick to get to the destination that they lose parts of the journey. Mm. And when we lose parts of the journey, we lose pieces, we lose keys, we lose principles that have been given to us to equip us for that purpose. So I started to think that purpose is kind of like that old-fashioned way of popping popcorn. I don't know if people even remember that. That we used to put a little bit of oil in the pot. And we would put the grains in, <laughs> and then we would cover it, mm-hmm. and we would eat, and we would hear them popping like one by one, right? Pop, 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 pop right? Mm-hmm. And it would take a longer time to get to the process. And purpose is kind of like that. It's not that instant my microwaveable two minutes and thirty seconds, right? It's that slow process that requires oil. 
Because remember, purpose Sorry. is God driven, God driven, and kingdom centered. Yes. So there's no purpose with oil, and I use oil as the symbol of the anointing. Yes. So there is really no purpose mm. without the oil and the anointing of God upon your life. Exactly. Now, when that oil comes in, Tracy, it is like this slow process. <sighs> Yes. yes, I'm anointed, I'm appointed, I know my assignment, mm -hmm. but I still have to walk this thing out to get to my destination. Yes. So there is slow popping, this slow evolution of me understanding who I am. And purpose, the foundation of purpose and the components of purpose really comes from identity and identity comes from God. One of the things in Matthew chapter 16, when Jesus was having a dialogue with Peter, he began to say, um, who do men say that I am? And mm -hmm. Peter said, well, you know, thou art the Christ. Then he went into this dialogue with Jesus. And then Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? That tells me that I need to get a personal revelation of God. Oh, not man. what people said, not what my pastor said, yes. not what my friend said, or my mother said. Mm -hmm. but have a personal revelation of who God is. Yes. So then let's take that further, because you know I love to teach, right? Yes, and you are an excellent teacher, so let's break it down. I'm with you. <laughs> so now when I talk about getting that personal revelation of who Christ is, that mm. is really the foundation or the beginning of the oil for my purpose to begin to unfold. Then he goes a little bit further and he says unto Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Now when we talk about keys of the kingdom, we're talking about principles, we're talking about strategy. Yes. We're talking about something that does not exist on the earth, but something that exists in on the inside of you that only activates based on your connection. Mm. So, there is this purpose lying dormant on the inside of me, but if I don't know who I am, I can never come into contact with that purpose because mm -hmm. I have the connection. Right. My God. <laughs> Let's establish the foundation that we must have that connection. There is no purpose outside of that connection with God mm -hmm. because he is giving us keys to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, if we talk about keys, we're talking about ownership. We're yes. talking about dominion. We're talking about... I see you getting... I'm getting excited. <laughs> I don't know how Oprah does it, you know what I mean? Where you like, someone gets, gets that, she calls it an aha moment, right? And I'm like, I'm supposed to sit here and look poised, but I want to go, yes! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, good. <laughs> That's fine. So there is this connectivity that has to happen before I begin to understand who I am. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about keys of the kingdom, it means I stand in a place of authority. It means I own something. It means I dominate. Yeah. From Genesis, God's plan for mankind was dominion. He said, I give you dominion, right? And I want you to rule. Yeah. And keys talk about ownership. Keys talk about rule. Mm -hmm. Keys talk about authority. Access. But mm -hmm. dominion is first a mindset before it is a position. Let's repeat that I'm part. Say that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> one more time. Dominion is first a mindset mm. before it is a position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I connect to God, I'm like, Peter, I have that moment with who do you say that I am? Right. And Christ becomes real to me. He says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. So what are these keys? These keys are principles. These keys are like our authority. Because we are designed as experts, right? But we don't see ourselves as experts. When he gives us these keys of dominion and these keys to the kingdom, now there's a difference between knowing I have the power and knowing that I have the power and the authority. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. When we talk about knowing, that's when we begin to understand and unfold purpose. Knowing that I have the power, he says, behold, I give you power, right? Mm -hmm. I have the power and I also have the authority. Now, now let's break down power and authority a little bit more. So if I think about uh, a policeman, right? Mm -hmm. If I see a policeman approaching my vehicle and puts his hands like this. Right. 
I'm going to stop. Why? Because I knew that he had to call. Like, if I don't stop, I'm going to be arrested. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I know that he has the authority to stop me. Right. Whether or not I'm doing the right thing, whether or not I'm, you know, I was driving the speed limit, etc. Because of the office, mm. there is power and there is authority. Yes, teach today. Now, as the leave us straight, if you don't understand that we have both the power and the authority to rule and to dominate mm. and to be on the earth and to manifest the Oh, my God. Taking my place of dominion and being that person in a certain mindset of the kingdom, then it's a position. Mm. But I have to understand that that police officer, because if I just use power, Tracy, anyone could, could stand in front of my people and put their hands up. Right. And I probably will stop, but I will not be obligated to stop because they don't really have the authority. They mm-hmm. have the power. Right. In that they could stop me, mm-hmm. but they don't have the authority that a policeman has because of his uniform, because of his badge, because of his position. Mm-hmm. Yes, come on. So, I will be sitting when I'm going with it. So, your purpose gives you that rule and reign, mm-hmm. that power and authority. Oh my God. Over that thing. Yes. So that when you show up, things begin to shift because it is like that policeman. It is like, okay, I am manifesting the kingdom. I have shown up. Mm-hmm. So this thing has to shift to accommodate my being because I dominate in my mind and then I dominate in my position. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and if we can just get that in our head. Just get that if in our we spirit. Could just get that. If we could just understand that we were created to have these keys and to dominate. You see, we feel like dominion is just that place of authority or when I arrive to this particular place. But you were created from the foundation of the earth, from your birth, to dominate, but in your area of purpose. So what happens is each of us has a specific area. Mm-hmm. There can be 50 million people on the earth that took the message of purpose. Right. But each individual has a set target, has a set group that they will reach. I may reach someone that you may never reach. You may reach someone that I may never reach. But when the kingdom is put into perspective as a holistic view, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is on God. Yes. Many members. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. So, living in their purpose is a member of the body, which is one kingdom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, let me say that. Because right? <laughs> you could just put a pin in that, but I want you to keep going. <laughs> when I don't live in my purpose, mm-hmm. it means that I am a missing link of strength in the kingdom of God. Right. I actually enable the kingdom of darkness to gain territory. Because it means that the space, Tracy, which I was designed to dominate and occupy, now becomes vacant. Oh my God. Ooh. And it means then that the people who need me to show up, they can't show up because I don't show up and my space is vacant. So then the kingdom cannot be manifested because I'm sleeping on my power and my authority and then I'm leaving spaces open for other people who are waiting on me to show up so that they can show up. Oh, boy. <laughs> I haven't mastered, you know, not showing how excited I am about it, okay? <laughs> you go oh. right ahead. This is what we need in the body of Christ. This is what we need in the kingdom. If everyone understands that we have been given these keys, these principles. I say something and I say pain teaches principle and principle can be duplicated. Oh, what is that? One more time. For <laughs> the people in, in the cheap seats. <laughs>
Which, which means my pain gives me principles, principles which is how I keep. Oh my god. Ooh. <laughs> and, and it's that key because, because the, the youth of the kingdom, kingdom dominate. dominate. So, so I'm no longer like like afraid or ashamed to show up in authority, in courage, and in boldness. I don't, I don't have, have to dumb down because I've created it for dominion. Yes. I've created it for rule and reign. I've created it to manifest a kingdom. I get tired of seeing weak Christians mm-hmm. who don't feel like, like they, they have, have the power, power and the authority to use their keys. Right. Right. It's my key. Right. <laughs> That's why I was born. That's right. Right. So how can I have keys for a house, a house, and not even open the door? Oh man, that's sobering. Just that that whole thought right there. My God, I'm standing in front of a mansion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I have the key, but I refuse to open the door. But the keys are in my hands. Mm-hmm. And this is what we do when we don't live in purpose. This is why, I mean, I would never have understood these things had I not gone through my pain. Right. And people look at pain as if it's insignificant. Mm. These are the things that give you your keys. Right. They give you your principles. Mm. They give you that thing that you are expert. So now, Tracy, what I can do. When, when I, I begin, begin to dominate, dominate and I begin to establish the kingdom of God, not my kingdom, right. so the kingdom of God on the earth, now I can reach down and there's some people who are struggling and I can now empower and pull them up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now when I understand their keys, they can now reach down and pull someone else up. Oh my God. And that is what the kingdom looks like. So it is a mindset that I first must get that I have the power and the authority I have, I have to, to uh, dominate my area of pain. I am, I am an expert of, of my pain, and now I use my keys as assets. Right. My God. I'm sure just that little segment alone is going to really encourage people because, you know, you go through things, you suffer losses, you take blows. And, you know, we just we focus on, okay, why is this happening to me? Why did it have to happen to me? We focus on that. But we don't understand on the other side of that experience, on the other side of that pain, yes. you know, is 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 as <laughs> keys. Yes, it is a key because we My look God. at pain as something that cripples us, but it's actually something that propels us. But it's your application of pain, right? Because if you allow it to cause you to be muzzled or to hide or to shut your mouth or to not share your voice, then it becomes powerless. Right. So it is loaded with potential, but the potential has to be activated. Mm. Or you would just always stand outside of your house and never open the door and then you return to the grave with your key. Oh my God. My God. Return to the grave with your keys yeah my bishop he had um he had made reference to that you know where there's just so much potential in the grave and that's a you know it's a hard statement (laughs) but it is so true there is so much potential in the grave because they never understood that there was purpose in that pain there was purpose in in those those um you know things that trip us up throughout our journey you know and and with and that experience wasn't just for them or it wasn't just for me exactly i always say it didn't happen to you it happened through you so you were the medium for that heat my god he activated on the earth so even though it feels like it happens to us we feel the pain we go through the emotions we feel we you know the situation happens to us but it actually happens through us right my God. So he teaches us principle. He teaches principle. Principle can be duplicated. He teaches us principles that now give us keys of access. My God, my God, my God. That is huge. Remember how people are talking about purpose? I still hope that purpose is my key of access. I'm not going to try to say, oh, well, uh, uh, this, this already has purpose. Uh, this, this already has purpose. That is one of my keys. Mm. So I'm not going to discount because that is my lane of power and authority. I will be powerless.
that anywhere else, anywhere else because, because I, I was created to dominate with, with these specific keys. keys. Right. So, so, Try to take trace these keys and try to open my house. house. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god. So, so I, I let her do the whole stuff, stuff and I, I do the poor stuff, stuff. But when, when we come, come together, together, many members, members one body, one god, one kingdom, mm. and all of us is poor. Well, hold on one second. We're getting some feedback here. Let me turn my uh, volume right. down. <laughs> one second, one second, one second. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. We some yeah, and that that also helps people not focus on what someone else is doing. You know exactly. if something good exactly. happens to someone else. You know, we can't dissect why something good happens to someone else because we don't know the pain that they had to go through in order to achieve whatever that accomplishment is, you know. And the same thing, you know, with, with, the, with the pain. Sometimes we can be judgmental to say, you know, why someone is going through something or, you know, try to come up with an antidote as to why, you know, point out the sin and, you know, focus on that versus the fact that that person had, you know, was brave enough to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, you know, and move forward past that pain yeah. point. My God. Yeah. My yeah. God. Yeah. And, and comparison is the thief of that poop us because that, that is like borrowing keys. keys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't, can't access your, your level of dominion with somebody else's key. key. Right. Right. So, so we, we just, just have to walk, walk in our lane. lane. Don't, Don't discount. discount. I, I always say people say, oh, they, they had more pain or their life was, you know, more painful. painful. Their situation was more painful. Pain, pain is pain. Mm -hmm. If you hurt, you hurt. Right. Yes, I understand some circumstances seem more extreme than others. But my pain of low self-esteem hurts me just as much as somebody's pain of abuse. Right. Right. Because, because it impacted, impacted my, my life, life but it's impacted, impacted my life because it happened through, through me, so I could have keys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to keep me access. So, so that now becomes my area where, area where I can now help people, people who struggle, struggle with those self esteem or people, people who struggle, people struggle, struggle with a particular, particular thing. thing. I, I can now help them to overcome because I overcame. So, again, it's not us, not just about us, it's not a selfish situation. You know, it's not a, a, a place to stay and just grovel in, but we have to realize that once we get to the other side of that pain or that issue that we will, that God is going to, it's not in vain. God is going to no, use that to, to help somebody else along the way. You know, and I think about some of my pain points and just like, you know, when, when my mother passed away and different things like that. And, and it was like, God kept putting people in my path who had the same scenario. You know, even yeah. to this day, he's still putting people in my path who lost their mother or lost their father, you know, and so everyone has their own way and their own journey as to how they, you know, right. move forward. But I, you know, if I was able to encourage someone along the way to say, well, this is what, you know, God did for me, you know, in that process, you know, and with some of the mistakes that I made during that process, <laughs> you know, but listen, I made it. I made it by the grace of God, you know. <laughs> And the, the thing about it, Tracy, is like none of our experiences goes to waste. Right. Like we may think like, why did I have to experience that? Or you probably, you probably think, think to yourself, you know, I could have really did with all that experience. Like, did I have to really go through that? Like, I would want to take all that experience. Mm -hmm. But everything adds up to who we are. Right. And everything adds up to our power and authority and our key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so we can't do anything because all of these things form a part of what I call the purpose toolkit. Mm -hmm. Actually gives you so we talk about principles and keys, but it actually gives you tools. Okay, let's talk about the tools. Amazing, because it's like everything that you need is already loaded on the inside of you, which you need to be awake on. And it just means that the right architect or the right thing to just pull that out of you, to just activate or just to make you think like, wow, right? I saw it that way. I never knew this, you know. So it just pulls that thing out of you that's already inside of you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and your creativity 
begins to come alive based again on your connectivity. Right. Everything is about being connected to the Father. Like I tell people when I coach, like all of my coaching programs literally came in the presence of God. Wow. I didn't Google it. I didn't go to YouTube and look at other people's stuff. And now like sometimes when I see someone teaching and I'm like, wow, that's the exact thing that I may say or they have done in this exact same way or this vision looks so similar. Mm. But I have to understand that, okay, there's nothing new under the sun. Solomon says it. But there's everything new in the sun, S-O-N. So there's yes. nothing new under the S-U-N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything new in the S-O-N. Mm-hmm, exactly. So when I sit in the presence of the S-O-N, yes. me, me, using my keys, using my pain, using what I have, right. it gives me what I need to have my programs. Mm-hmm. But remember, one God one kingdom, many members. Yes. So another member in in the same kingdom may have something that reflects me, but it's supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God. But our tools may be different. Our principles may be different, but it all comes from one kingdom. Right. Right. So I understand that. Then I would understand that when I see, okay, someone else doing something similar or they, they use an idea that I think that I, I had, there's nothing new under the sun. Right. As went. But my creativity is based on my connectivity. So I sit before the presence of the Lord using all of my principles, using all of my tools. Mm-hmm. And then he guides me and he says, okay, this is the program that I needed to launch. This is how you're going to do it. This is how you're going to promote it. Right. I kid you not. Yes, I use normal marketing strategy. Yes, I educate myself about business. Yes, I read. Yes, I do all of these things. But the main strategy yeah. comes from the kingdom. The main strategy comes from God. Mm-hmm. All of the creativity comes from my connectivity. Yes. So I can't do what I do without Him. Yes. I tried it, right? <laughs> I did try it. Like, when I, like, I was feeding myself, okay? <laughs> you got those steps a little bit. <laughs> so I thought that I had it under control and I started to shift from the original mandate that God gave me and I started to do my own thing and right. create my own programs and guess what? Which is All easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. All of them fail. And then God said to me, you birth it in prayer, you keep it in prayer. Yes. We want to birth it in prayer and then run with it out of prayer. Right. Or let outside influences, you know, give their input and pollute that that you got straight from the throne room. <laughs> yes. And that's then when you do that, then it does not work because that was not the strategy that God gave you. Right. So you decide to do your own thing, and I know because I tried it, I did it. <laughs> I didn't realize I was doing it, you see, because I got so much in a place where I felt like I could do it on my own. Like, I can run this, I can do this. Right. You know? and to the point where I forgot about the God part of the equation, wow. and it was just the Christian part of the equation. So the creativity was coming from me and not from God because there was no connection. Yes. Yes. And and I see that happen often. You know, there's a lot of um, vessels, you know, that are kind of uh, in the coaching lane now, you know, which I think is good. You know, there's a lot of people that that have their strong opinions about that and and everything. But, you know, we have to we have to go out into the world and and make a difference. You know, we have to be that light. We have to be that light and it might not look like we're used to. And so it, it was so refreshing for me. You know, to see people who actually are believers, actually have a relationship with the Lord, but God has gifted them and endowed them, you know, with an ability and gifts to help others push, you know, to help others. I'm telling you, when I was on that call and the tears just came from nowhere and I'm like, okay, it it was like a light bulb just went off to say, okay, so even though I'm in this painful place, it's it has purpose. It wasn't just... You know, the enemy just beating up on me or whatever. It's, you know, yeah. we give the enemy too much credit sometimes, you know? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we need to be busy building the kingdom of God. Right. So I really don't have time to participate in helping him build his kingdom. Right. I'm too busy. Right. Like, I have work to do. <laughs> 
<laughs> and trust me, people, she is very busy. Okay, if, and I'm telling you, I see her on on a on a social, you know, media, and she's you know putting out her information and doing all this stuff, right? And and um, and I'm doing I'm doing the same, and I'm just like, this is hard work. You know, people don't it understand. Is. It is tell you purpose is not easy it takes a lot of dedication because you will want to give up because it requires a lot out of you right and um you know it requires that time spent with god but then it also requires that time spent working the strategy that he gives you right right there are right. a lot of people tracy that sit with plans from god eh? but that's where they stop like right. there's nothing after the plan right the vision <laughs> make plain yes hallelujah vision done right but there's no running with the vision. <laughs> right. It's just there in books, in journals, looking pretty. Oh, the and journals. There's no money. The journals. Listen, faith without works is dead. You have to work. This is why dominance is a mindset before it is a position. Right. You have to get the mindset, get what you need in the presence, but then when you come out, listen, you're going to have to work it. Oh, man. Seriously. Seriously. I don't, I mean, I don't know if you're baking cookies. Whatever the vision is, you know, you have to work it. You don't have to work. You have to put in the work. Faith is not magic. Right. People think faith is magic. So when I say have faith in God, have faith in God, like something is going to beam out of the heavens and just fall into my lap and it's going to manifest this vision. No, 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 honey. Right. <laughs> you are going to have to get that strategy in the presence, but come out yeah. and then work it and then build it. And when you're building it, please build it with excellence. Oh. Let it reflect oh. the caliber of our God. Say that part again. <laughs> Let it reflect the caliber of our God. When I tell people that I started my coaching business mm -hmm. with no money, they think I'm crazy because the type of stuff that people have seen me do or, you know, see on my social media, etc. When I tell you I have to be my marketing guru, I have to be my graphic designer, I have to be uh, my promoter, I have to be my booking agent, I now have an admin, but I had to be my own admin assistant. Listen, when you are starting on building a vision, you do whatever is necessary. Right. Get it done. But do it with excellence. We use too many crutches and we say, oh, I don't like technology. Oh, I don't like social media. Oh, I don't like... How would you and I have been connected to do something for the kingdom if it had not been for social media Come being on. a vehicle? Seriously. You know what? Oh, my God. I can scream right there. Because it was a time where, you know, I was so excited, you know, what, a couple of years ago when, when, the, when Periscope was, was new. And so I was, you know, exposed to people like you and, and other, you know, people who I thought were just phenomenal. And it, it, and so I was like telling all of the people around me, look, you got to download Periscope, you know, let me show you who to follow and this and that and whatever. And they're like, oh, girl, you know, go on, you and your social media stuff, right? And I'm like, no, seriously, the people are really equipping us, you know, to, to move forward in those things. You know, yeah. and um, but you can't make someone want to be receptive to whatever it is, you know. So I had to just take responsibility for myself. You just have to show up, right. share your message, mm -hmm. and the one that you are, you know, supposed to reach, they will get it. Right. Because you will get the negative Nancys, you will get the paranoid Peters, you will get people who... <laughs> are totally against you like when i just started people were you know telling me all these negative things oh you can't help people find purpose purpose comes from god and blah. i'm like yes but that's not the premise of what i'm doing i'm helping you get in touch with something on the inside of you then i'm gonna tell you you have to take that to prayer and you have to let god tell you what your purpose is right so when right. we don't have an understanding that is why we perish mm -hmm. so they were like oh social media a lot of people are doing all of this and Tracy, they probably are. I right. know there's people that have robbed some people the wrong way on social media. Yeah. I know there are people that are doing all manner of things. But guess what? There are people like us who are really trying to help. Yeah. There are people who are really trying to feed, who are really trying to equip. It's a pity that some abuse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can't discount a platform because other people have abused it. Exactly. That's tr That's the truth. That's the truth. One bad experience. You hear it all the time. They're like, oh, I don't be bothered with that. But you have to have that discernment, you know, to be able to say, okay, this is someone that I can connect, you know, with and I can grow from, you know. And that also takes humility. That's another 
discussion, you know, is of being humble enough to say, okay, I know this person has a level of expertise in this area. Let me humble myself. You know, let me support their movement. Let me, let me, you know, be fed. <laughs> exactly. You know. I always say follow who feeds you. Right. So everybody doesn't feed you in every season. Right. Right. So we don't follow to follow. We follow to be fed. Mm -hmm. So what you need in a different season, I mean, like, I hate to eat the same thing over and over and over. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat rice every day. Right. So in that season, someone may be feeding you, but then change happens and then it may be someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So once you see that growth, mm -hmm. once you see that they are pulling you up to a new level, like I love teaching any common people. If you come on my Periscope or any platform, like you would see me teaching because I want people to take tools to be equipped to go back out and to dominate and to fight. Right. right? That's why I'm called Jan Slayer yeah. because I want to help people to go back and to fight. Yes. So I understand my authority. Mm. I understand the power given to me. Mm -hmm. I understand dominating the slave. Right. So I am going to do that and continue to equip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You mentioned fight, you know, and sometimes we have to understand that some of those ab abrasive scenarios that we are placed into, like a job where a boss is super aggressive, you know, or a family where you, your voice is not being heard, and so you have to push and fight a little harder so that you are being heard. Sometimes these aggressive scenarios that we are placed in are strategies that God, yep. you know, is using so that we can become stronger in certain yep. areas, whether it be our work ethic, you know, or whether it just be our own personal ethics, whatever it is, a lot of times that, again, it's not just <laughs> for us to go through, but it's to, you know, help strengthen our muscles in certain areas in preparation for our future, you know? Yeah. So do you want to expound any more on, on strategy for those well, that may say, okay. Me. For those who may say like, okay, yeah, I hear everything that you're saying. It sounds good. Yeah. Um, for me, strategy is twofold, right? Strategy is an overall plan or a blueprint. You must have an overall plan or a blueprint for your life. Right. That plan or that blueprint comes from God. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you are connected to Him, yeah. then I always say that what comes out of you now should be a reflection of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So connect to Him, then a reflection of it. Mm -hmm. So when you sit and write this strategic plan for your life, of course things will change, but because of your connection with him, you're not supposed to be writing anything that goes against his will for your life. Right. I, th I think sometimes people fall back because they think, is this my vision, is this my plan, or is this God's plan? Ooh, that was me! <laughs> I struggled so with we, that. We struggle there and then we stay there because we don't move because we feel it's me and it's not God. Oh man, yes. Yes. When, if I begin to step out and I begin to write, as I begin to write, then God will pull me in line mm -hmm. for what you say. Right. So he gives me illumination for every step, but if I don't take a step, there's no illumination. So I say no. Right. My God. So in terms of strategy, I say write, okay? Write the overall plan for your life. Begin writing what you see for yourself, where do you want to see yourself. Right. So we begin there, and then start making steps towards it. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we hit ourselves, and we stay stuck because we don't take action. Right. Right. My God. Stuff is also a mindset, not a position. Mm-hmm. 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 So you're stuck here. Yeah. Before you're stuck, like, in physical. Right. My God. So this is where now, okay, you're saying I'm stuck in a particular area, now that means I have to expand my knowledge in that area to be able to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that for me, revelation helps me move. So when I sit and I study the word of God and I get a revelation of a thing, I will share that six Saturday I had to speak at an event and I will say people no longer walk church with both of their friends anymore. Right. Because we go to church crazy about an emotional experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't go to church to take up tools to equip us to fight. That's so true. So true. Go 
nobody walks with her notebook or even taking notes anymore when whatever your pastor or your minister is teaching is tool that is going to equip you to fight. Right. So that's almost a dependency. Yeah, yeah. It is a dependency. And then we feel good in the service and we leave powerless. Not not have not being able to retract anything. <laughs> we, we don't have any tools. Right. And then we lose the battle because your minister would have equipped you with, with tools for the week ahead. You thought your memory was so powerful yeah. that you could remember it all. Right. You don't have any notes to go back to. And then you end up losing in your battle. And then you try to put it in your iPhone, and that's just another distraction. You need to just be writing. Right. Put that you phone down. You want to check Facebook and Instagram, and you see all these notifications. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you try to put your little notes in there, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Who's texting me? What's going on? All these distractions. Right. My God. Distractions come, because as the word goes out, some fell by the wayside. Yeah. Some were eaten up. Some fell into good ground. Right. Oh my God! And when you see Tracy over there working on her wood, because the wood fell on good ground, you want to be upset because Tracy applied the same thing that you had access to. Come on, we had the same twenty-four hours. The same access. The same access. Come on. Ah, uh, maybe a different assignment. You know. Right. We have the same access, but what am I doing with my access? Now you know I can teach all night, so if you don't stop me, I will. Okay. <laughs> listen. Okay. Well, listen. Okay. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Purpose University. Let's talk about Purpose University because we could. I could just see us talking and talking and talking, and I am enjoying every moment of this, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. But let's talk about Purpose University. Yes. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> so Purpose University, I call it mentorship at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And it's because you have access to a variety of mentors for different areas right on your cell phone. The same thing that you're scrolling to be distracted and to waste time. Right. <laughs> you can now invest time in a 10-minute or 15-minute teaching video that you can now use to grow yourself. Mm -hmm. So it is an equipping center, an online equipping center, where because of my passion for purpose, I want to see people live in their dominance and use their keys, Tracy. Mm -hmm. So I have been before God and God gave me the vision. I launched it last year, but I didn't quite launch it in the way that he gave it to me. I kind of did my own version of the thing. Right. Easy to so do. So the relaunch, he has guided me to specific people by relationship. And they have partnered with me on the vision to equip the kingdom. Mm -hmm. so to walk in dominance. Mm -hmm. If we want the world to take us seriously, we must take us seriously. Right. We, we have, have a problem with investing. So because we have a problem with investing, then we stay stuck. Yeah. Because we don't get the tools that are readily available. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So because you know, this is a one-stop shop where we're putting all the mentors together, and you essentially pay the price of having one course with seven coaches. Oh, wow. Wow. And they will activate you in different areas. Because so some things simply come by activation. My spiritual mom, Marsha Petro, she, when I first met her, she began to say to me, do you know that you have a revelation gift? And I was like, what's that? And she's like, I'm going to groom you and I'm going to activate you with it. So now me being around her, her having the ability to activate that gift, mm -hmm. All the revelation gifts that can be activated in me. She's also one of the lecturers. Oh, wow. So I believe each lecturer has something on the inside of them to activate other people. In three months, because I didn't want to be some presentation or some program that you just buy and you never use, uh, something that you never <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Do I have so many things that I bought that I never use? <laughs> oh, I was just talking about that on Periscope where I bought this, um, 
you know, this very expensive uh, course on Instagram, right? So I was going to learn all the, the do's and don'ts of Instagram and this and that. And that was um, probably about seven months ago. Well, we know how social media works, you know, things change by the week. And so you can't yeah. do some old antiquated, you know, material on something that's going on now. You've got to stay fresh. And so that's teaching yeah. me a major lesson about books that I've read, I bought and have not read, you know, it was good for that season. And you were supposed to pass Hi. that on, you know, to someone else. So I'm learning about God's timing. <laughs> We have to stop doing the emotional buy. So I didn't want this to be an emotional buy. I wanted it to be a, a, a place where people actually grow. So this is why the program is three months, 90 days, because you're going to be rocking with us for a long time. And you can hold your hands to ensure that you get activated in your money mindset, in your leadership, in your purpose, understanding the pain of purpose. We have a course called Godonomics, which I'm so excited about. Because it talks about faith, business, and innovation, and how we can cause or build a kingdom ecosystem by mm. using the talents and the ideas that we all have, pulling it together for the kingdom of God. So we also have God on our We have Marketplace Messenger, helping us to be relevant in the workplace. We're not going to go out on our job and stand talking about to John chapter 4. Right. We need to know how to dominate mm -hmm. in our area, but still be relevant mm -hmm. in anywhere that we go. Yes, yes, yes. Have that course to teach about being a marketplace messenger. So that is what Purpose University is. It's going to be ongoing. We will be bringing on new lecturers every semester to activate in a different area. Mm -hmm. My vision is that eventually Purpose University is the place where you can come for everything mm -hmm. from business to Bible. Mm -hmm. I love that. I absolutely love that. If you guys are interested in learning more about Purpose University, I put the website right here. It's www dot purpose university dot co correct yes okay right. www dot purpose university dot co now i have a gift that i wanted to kind of um not raffle off but you know <laughs> i wanted to i love i'm a giver i love to give you know but in this case there is something you don't have to buy a raffle ticket in case you guys are off the hook for that but you do have to go and follow my sister on Instagram. You got to go follow her. And let me make sure I have her Instagram. Her Instagram is at B, which is B as in boy, Krisha. And you can see the spelling of her name right here. Let me make sure it's there. It's at, at B Krisha. And for the first 10 people that go to Instagram and follow her, and she'll give me the account of whoever her new followers are today, uh, you, you, your name and your handle will be put in a drawing. Okay, so at the end of the, the purpose, the, the hashtag Destiny Launchers, um, you know, series, we will do a drawing and we will make sure that you get, you know, uh, an opportunity, hopefully, to win this gift. That I purchased. <laughs> so again, go follow her at B Krisha, which is uh, B C R I uh, S H A, and uh, so go follow her. And then also, you know, you you got to follow me too. So okay, <laughs> so you got to go to at. Plush Life Media, at Plush Life Media. Did I even put that on here? I know I put hers on here, but go to at Plush Life Media. If you are not familiar with that, you can go to my website, TracyDAnderson.com, and all of my social media links are there. Follow me as a new follower. Now, if you already follow me, you can't unfollow me and then follow me because I'm going to know. <laughs> But well, this is right, not disqualified. Right. <laughs> Come on, you're gonna be just disqualified, so don't do that to yourself. Um, but yeah, follow me, follow her, and we will put your name in the drawing and we'll make sure you get, you know, an opportunity to try to win that prize, you guys. So and I'm hoping that my prizes will get better and better and better as these go forward. Um, but you know, I purchased it and I liked it, so I I, I think it'll be a blessing to whoever wins it. So I am so very excited. Is there anything else? I think I saw something about a cruise that you had going on. And so, you know, I want to know about this cruise. Oh, my gosh. I have, like.
like so much going on, but I believe once you have the capacity for it, you have your keys, your power, and your authority, you got to do it. Yes. So my is the Pupa Saris cruise. It's actually July 28th yes. to August 4th. And we are going to Honduras, Belize, Mexico, and Grand Cayman. Oh. So. <laughs> My birthday is August 4th now. So this might look up. <laughs> this might be a great gift, right? Oh, man. So you're going to get all of what you get on social media up close and personal one of my uh coaching cl uh, clients she came last year she said you are the same person that you are online in person i'm like yeah like and it takes too much work right so like we do the moments with god sessions we do purpose sessions but we also do the fun things and we just get to experience life I believe that life is meant to be experienced and enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we do, you know, the prayer stuff and we do the purpose stuff, but we also do the fun fellowship stuff. So, it is amazing seven days, beautiful islands, beautiful people, and you are going to leave, I mean, way better off in time you came in if you come and you join us on the cruise so we still have availability they can email me they can reach me on social media i'm on all social media platforms get the information tell me hey i'm ready to get connected to this movement yes uh, well I, you, you might not be able to see it on your end but i included the um the jpeg of the explosion okay it's a beautiful beautiful jpeg and um well artwork rather than not jpeg so if you guys are interested, make sure, make sure you reach out to her on, on uh, social media or I think uh, PurposeUniversity.co. Uh, can they go there and they can reach out as well and go on they can reach out to me on social media might be easier because uh, university stuff will be different. So anywhere on social media, DM me. I am bougie. DM me. <laughs> Trust me, if she, she is not bougie. <laughs> Well, that is awesome. Well, is there anything else that you want to leave with the viewers today as it pertains to anything else that you're offering, like the coaching, if, they, if they're interested, you know, in, um, in actually hiring you as their coach? You know, I'm sure there are some people that have listened to say, hey, I know I can humble myself and say I would like some help. I need someone to give me some practical tools so that I can push towards my purpose. What, where, how, how do they reach out to you? The same way with the social media? So they can email me, GiantSlayer at ChrisHubbowin.com. Again, that's GiantSlayer at ChrisHubbowin.com. You can also reach out to me on social media, and I would invite you to join my group. It's Pufas Diaries on Facebook. We talk about everything Pufas in there. It's a great supportive environment uh, that we foster to really help people push past being and passionately pursue Pufas. So we do have a group that you can join absolutely free, and then from there, you know, you know, if you want to work with me one on one, that is an option. And you're just like, I need to get it done. I need to activate Pufas in my life. And I yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Well, listen, I am so excited. Make sure you follow her. Make sure you reach out and make sure you join her group because I'm actually a member of her group. And I'm telling you, she's very generous with all the wonderful tools and things that she does. She's very consistent with always going live. And I'm telling you, you could, like she said, she popped popcorn. You can sit there with your popcorn and she is teaching, <laughs> teaching, teaching. And hopefully you have a notepad nearby so that you can actually, act, you know, use the tools that she is giving. Well, listen, I want to say I so appreciate you taking the time to come and talk to little old me. Um, you are such a blessing. It's been an honor. It's been an honor. Anytime. Once I have the time, I'll make the time. And I am always excited to share, to help people push past pain and passionately pursue purpose. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys, thank you so much. Again, this was another installment of Destiny Launchers. And um, I hope, you know, that it, that it inspired you. It is our hope that you were inspired, that you're encouraged, that you're going to go get that old journal and dust it off. And, you know, get that vision and written, you know, plainly so that you can run with it. Um, if you have any questions, additional questions, you can go to TracyDAnderson.com, you know, or you can definitely reach out to Krisha. To 
and she will answer any questions that, that you may have as it pertains to some of the, her, the programs that she has in place. Um, and again, we encourage you to follow us on social media so that your name can get put into the drawing. And uh, we look forward to doing this again. I hope to speak to you again in the future. But yes. I, I just speak blessings over you. I speak blessings. Now, I was supposed to practice my... <laughs> I was supposed to practice my accent. <laughs> so I'm not from Trinidad and Tobago, but I'm going to try to practice my accent, okay? And the more that I develop in it, I want you to give, you know, to judge it for me, okay? <laughs> that was all I got. <laughs> so funny. Close. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, mm. keep working on it. Keep working on it. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I speak blessings over you. I hope your week is wonderful, Krisha. And if, again, reach us on our social media or our websites if you have any questions. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.